The Great War is here. The biggest Game of Thrones fans in the world are not what I thought they'd be. HTTPS colon slash slash CDN. Vox CDN. Com slash thumper slash U7 BS6 H0 D Xab 3 E's 6 A R K M 0 equals slash 0 by 0 colon 2040 by 1360 slash 1570 by 883 slash filters full colon 819 by 374 colon 1145 by 700 format web slash CDN Vox CDN com slash upload slash course underscore image slash image slash five five six zero four five five one slash tiffany underscore one seven oh seven oh one underscore eighteen twenty three underscore oh three two seven oh jpg if you squint or set the frame of your camera correctly the backdrop of Nashville's Gaylord Opry Island Resort and Convention Center could also pass for King's Landing, one of Game of Thrones' key settings. The interior of this resort is a knockoff Disney World, with tropical gardens and man-made rivers you can cruise down on flatboats. Encased in a spectacular glass dome 30 feet high, the atrium boasts 10,000 species of plants and a constant temperature of 71 degrees. So, appropriately, Con of Thrones, the first ever full-scale fan convention for HBO's Game of Thrones and George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, was held there last weekend. <music> Melissa Anelli, the Con's organizer and CEO of Mischief Management, which also runs Broadway Con and Leaky Con, the long-running Harry Potter fan convention, laughed when I suggested there was something just a little bit unsettling about this environment. Without a doubt concocted to convince resort guests that they were outside, exploring and being active tourists, when in actuality they were traipsing a strategically crafted ecosystem of resort-owned restaurants, shops, and activities. We said they could do like a Hunger Games here and it would be really good, really creepy. Naturally someone hosting a Game of Thrones convention visits a beautiful Bizarro World Resort and sees a battleground. The ballrooms and meeting rooms used for the convention's dozens of events were pretty standard, icy and beige and filled with rows of reception hall chairs. Like a wedding at a country club. A fan convention in a series of event spaces necessarily flattens something special, strange, and specific into something chintzy. But this didn't seem to bother anyone but me. Women in sleeveless gowns shivered through a 45-minute talk about how characters like Marjorie Tyrell and Brian of Tarth dressed to exploit or defy gender roles and then raised their hands to share eager, eloquent analysis. The self-centered, misogynist, white male nerd didn't show up. You would be hard-pressed to pick out a single trend in the event's demographics. Guests were more diverse in age, race, and gender than any self-selected collection of human beings I've ever seen. The cult of the self-centered, misogynist, White male nerd persists in many milieus, but I found no evidence of it at Con of Thrones. That's not to say there weren't nerdy white boys around, but they weren't making their presence a focal point nor did they protest the mere existence of progressive thought. Throughout the weekend, panels on race, gender, and sexuality in Westeros expanded from formal presentation into discussions in which women took the floor far more often than not. And the loudest cheer I heard all weekend was that first afternoon, during a silly skit about book characters who had been written out of the show, a volunteer dressed as the silent lady Stoneheart corrected another character by holding up a sign that read John didn't win the Battle of the Bastards. then replacing it with another that said Sansa Stark did. 
Dan Ali organized the event with Zach Luai, a writer for the popular Game of Thrones fan site Watchers on the Wall. When I spoke to them together inside an ornate tower on top of the Adrian's Pizza Place, they said they'd sold nearly 4,000 tickets. There were three choices for attendees, a $69 day pass, a $159 pass for all three days, or a $349 Valerian pass, which came with perks like priority seating at panels and a special Q&A session with all of the actors attending the con. The first two at least were a steal. Each day of the convention involved so many panels, discussions, group activities, performances, and meet and greets that any attendee could easily milk 12 full hours of experience out of their ticket price. Even as an impartial observer of the weekend, I often found myself worrying that I was going to be physically incapable of attending every event that sounded interesting, and though I came to Nashville expecting to ask how organizers decided which audience to prioritize book or show. It quickly became obvious that the question was stupid. An example hour, from 4 to 4.50 p.m. on Saturday, attendees could choose between a princess panel featuring Carrie Ingram, Shireen Barathaon, and Amy Richardson, the original Myrcella Barathaon. A discussion about fan fiction shipping hosted by various A Song of Ice and Fire bloggers, a conversation about the best sidekicks in Westeros, a meet and greet with sound designer Paula Fairfield, an autograph session with Kate Dickey, Liza Aaron, or a lecture on the historical parallels between Westeros and the real Middle Ages. Every type of fan was accounted for, every hour. And that's on top of the experience of just walking around. In the span of 10 minutes the first afternoon, just standing in the middle of a hallway, I saw four men dressed as Jon Snow walk past a woman dressed as Jon Snow, who was wheeling a black suitcase. Taped to the plastic shell, a printer paper photo of Ghost the Direwolf. A woman dressed as Daenerys Targaryen, with fake blood smeared on her chest and a chunk of red rubber in her hands. Meant to be the horse heart the character eats in season 1. Posed for a photo in front of a foam iron throne minutes before another Daenerys, holding a baby also dressed as a Daenerys, wandered across my path. I was nearly pushed down a flight of stairs by two teenage Marjorie Tyrells, sprinting past me while one growled to the other. Aren't you fucking sick of people asking to take your photo? She wasn't talking about me. I assume she was talking about the fact that bemused hotel guests were stopping some of the more recognizable characters to take photos with their kids. Nothing could be further from Westeros. The first night's featured event was a concert in the main ballroom, kicked off by a deeply obnoxious Nashville duo called The Smooth Rays, who introduced their first song, Georgia, saying, It's not about the state, it's about a girl we met there who really sucked. But whenever the event threatened to go off the tracks, some weird cosmic force interceded to course correct. The next band, the Manimals and New York City party rock band self-described as a mix of David Bowie, Joan Jett, the New York Dolls, the Yeah Yeah Yeahs, and Blondie, wow. Performed a Game of Thrones concept album called Seven, while its lead singer, Haley Bowery, went through half a dozen costume changes, licked an electric guitar, downed two bottles of beer, and introed a song about the Night's Watch by wandering off stage muttering, I'm gonna go take the black real quick. <laughs>